Hey, it's Arrow inside the LA Productions.us studio, LA Productions.us. It's time to play it forward. A look at the unexpected changes endured by the entertainers, writers, camera people, and all others affected but not infected by the global invasion of the coronavirus. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 131 with Zach Bear. You know, for many years, Zach Bear has been the force and face of music technology. His creations have been Disc Live, a pioneering move for fans of music to experience instant live. These days, he's rolling out technology to help ensure songwriters are going to get paid for their music being played in public spaces. Now, here's the thing. Zach is also a musician. After many years of living life behind the business scenes, he's just released a brand new single called Ordinary Girl. It's a solid piece of sound that was brought together during these COVID shutdown days. We are Unplugged and Totally Uncut with Zach Bear. Hey, good morning. It's uh, Zach Bear, or afternoon rather, Zach Bear giving you a call. <laughs> oh, you're out there in that California land, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm actually I'm actually in Memphis, so I'm a little wow, bit closer. Wow, dude, M- Memphis is where the soul of American music is, dude. The home of rock and roll and birthplace of the blues, as they say. You know, that explains a lot, because I was going to start things off by saying the last time that I heard songwriting like this, with those lyrics so so close to the street and so close to the heart, you must be a fan of Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I love Springsteen. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that, by the way. That's huge. <laughs> you you really have this way of bringing those words forward to make you think about a song in the way of, like, for instance, like Ordinary Girl. It, you know what, what I love about this song is that it sounds like an everyday battle, and then I go and read, no, there's some struggles going on here and a self-discovery. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of that, as a matter of fact. What no to bring it forward? How do you put it in that? Because I mean, we could sit down and talk about it all day, but you have you've got three minutes and forty five seconds to put it in a song. How do how do you crunch it down like that? You know, um, with that particular song, it, it you know some songs come to you really easily, and this was one of them. Um, and it, you know, it's based on, on on a on an actual experience, and because of that, um, I was able to I don't know quantify really the kind of the key elements I could understand what the girl was feeling and what she was going through. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, she decided that she was worthy, you know, and thankfully wanted to stick around. And that was pretty easy for, to come together, actually. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't something I had to spend a lot of time thinking about. It just came to me. Well, the way that you present it is it's, it's in a very nice, evenly paced way. In other words, you give me plenty of time to let it sink into my imagination and have a reaction. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't planning that, but <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad it turned out that way. I just, you know, I, I, I came to love the song and um, just, that's why I decided to, you know, lead with that, you know, single on the EP. And, uh, you know, it, it means something, you know, all the songs that I write, um, like, I don't know, you know, the Black Crows, they can write an entire record in like a week. That's right. <laughs> it, it takes me like years to write, you know, a record. <laughs> oh, now, now I'm going to be that creative uh, uh, professor then. So why do you think it takes years? Because, I mean, you've definitely got the, the drive, the passion and, and the skills to do it. Is it. Do you turn into a perfectionist? Well, you know, I, I mean, in this case, I think that um, that. It was a matter of timing, really. Uh, I wrote the song quite a long time ago, um, but you know, more recently in my uh, my career on the you know on the music business side, um, I've met a lot of people and grown in that that segment, I guess. And then when the pandemic hit, you know, it was like, uh, well, first of all, you know, nobody was touring, so my main business, we weren't doing anything, and. Uh, I had these songs that I'd written and I was like, you know what, you know, I don't know if I'm going to catch this virus and, you know, be dead in two days. So, you know, I better get on the stick and, and, uh, and get these done. And that's exactly what I did. It kind of puts the fear into you. And uh, I'm sure a lot of musicians, you know, at least the ones that I know kind of feel the same way is that there's been this big creative um, uh, just push during the pandemic and, 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 this pushed me to get this uh, get this song done. Well, I got to tell you something that this this is the very first time in my 41 years of radio where I really feel like the way that that musicians are releasing brand new music, I feel like I'm at Tower Records. I feel like I'm at Musicland. I mean, there's so much. I mean, I feel like that we're discovering new music every day and and I, I got to thank you for doing that. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, you know, I, I think that there is a um, uh, I don't want to call it a risk a renaissance, but I think there's just this huge creativity bubble and you're going to see a lot of records dropping in the next couple of months. I'm sure from, from, uh, 
people being cooped up at home and really reflecting on their life and, and, you know, just writing, writing music. Is there a part of your creative imagination that puts you back there in the latter part of the 1960s in the way that Crosby, Stills and Nash came through with Ohio and was starting to sing the, the, the language of, of the real people? Do you think we're going to go through that kind of a movement, even even if it's got a little bit of a rock or a blues edge to it? Uh, I think it's already started. Yep. Uh, honestly, I think there's a little bit of that going on already. And uh, I think we'll see more of it, actually. Rutherford Drive. First of all, a Southerner to say Rutherford. I mean, that that takes a special rhythm as it is because anybody else in the country would go Rutherford. No, Rutherford. <laughs> Tell me about this song. Well, you know where 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 Rutherford Drive is, don't you? No. In Charlotte. I was born in Charlotte. It is not. Where in Charlotte? Uh, at, you know, I can't remember. It's kind of like southern southern eastern side. I don't know. I can't remember where it is. I was four years old when I lived there. Um, but that's where I spent the first four, well, basically five years of my life on Rutherford Drive. Wow. You know, I'm in Charlotte. You know, I'm going to go look for this. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> See, I, I compared it that, that you know, I, I knew that you were from the South and stuff, but it was, I, I thought you were going to compare it to Rutherford 10, which is the town just right down the highway on 74. And so, but, but I mean, but I mean, because like I said, a Southerner will understand this word and the rhythm that goes with it. Yeah. And, and this, you know, I, it, it was written uh, again, you know, it, it, it was really a, a autobiographical type of song and Rutherford was the first song that I did in really a long time. Um, and, and that was really what I would call the start of the, the re-entered, uh, re-entered uh, whatever you want to call it, re-energizing of my creativity. Um, we got that song done and then really on the heels of that, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to do a record after this. But Rutherford Drive is actually directly south of downtown Charlotte, um, like around uh, Sharon Road. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Right around that area, like Sharon Road and Fairview. Oh, my God. And 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 what's so funny about that is that in about 25 minutes, I'm, I'm headed to a school to help them hand out computers to students, and I will drive right by there, I swear, because I go down Providence Road. Well, then all of a sudden, we're going to you know go by Sharon Amity and all that stuff. So, oh, my God. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think it is about the South that brings the, the, the emotion forward? Because, I mean, even if, if even if someone in the South says, bless your heart, you still feel it. <laughs> you do feel it. You know, I don't, I, I grew up in the South, you know, I grew up, you know, like I said, I spent the first four or five years in, in Charlotte, then uh, uh, ended up in, in Little Rock and, and Fayetteville and Arkansas. And, um, you know, I, I just think that the the Southern culture itself lends itself to really, really creative, emotional songwriting. And, um, you know, at least in my case, I mean, I was, I was brought up by um, uh, a single single mom, uh, you know, my parents divorced after we left Rutherford Drive and uh, she was an English professor. So I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. I was always really good with English and with writing and things like that. And uh, luckily I, I've just been able to articulate a lot of that feeling into, you know, some of these songs that I write. Well, one of the things that I've learned about you and I'm, and I'm so proud and listeners need to understand what where we're going with this. And that is, is that, you know, my parents always said, get a job first, then do music. You have a real job. You're in technology, but the passion is the music. That is correct. Um, you know, I've, I've really put myself through my musical career, if you want to call it that. I've been in technology for a long, long time. And I've had a couple of startup companies that were successful and ended up selling and, and whatnot. And, you know, I made the decision a long time ago that um, I didn't want to be one of those guys in a one bedroom apartment in L.A. trying to make it, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, and, you know, no air conditioning, four sweaty guys. And, well, you know, that never did sound fun to me. And it, it, rather than do that, I decided to leverage my talent, which I did have, which is technology. Um, you know, for the most part, and um, be able to play music alongside that. And, you know, I guess in the last 15 years or so, I've been really fortunate that my technology career has been kind of married to the music business. Um, and uh, because of that, it's enabled me to meet a lot of people, develop relationships uh, that I would have never had, you know, back in the day when I was just getting started with music or technology. So it's really, you know, it comes back to timing and it's really all about um, being, um, uh, not being in the right place at the right time, but it, it's being, putting yourself in that position where you have the, the, the relationships and 
the knowledge to understand the music as a business and not just go out and play guitar. Well, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, that was like when I when I first got into radio, it was about all the it was about the per- performance. It was about being on the air and the glory of that. And then as I grew through the ranks, all of a sudden I realized, wait a second, radio is a business. That changed the entire landscape of even how I performed on the radio. Oh, oh, exactly. You know, I, I agree with you. And I mean, there's I, I still to this day. I mean, I you know I get on a stage and. It's just as exciting as the very first time that I got on stage. And um, that feeling will never go away. But the background knowledge and understanding what has to take place in order to make it a business and not just, uh, you know, a fun hobby or something. You know, that's really where um, I, I think I've learned a lot. Well, you got you got to understand what's going on now. Now that you've released music and stuff like that during this whole covid thing, covid hair is in. So that means you're going to have to let that hair grow longer and get a beard, man, because that's what we do in the South. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> it's, already, it's already longer than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think technology is going to play in this dance with covid-19? I mean, you're part of that game right now. And it's not just about the medicine. There, there's a lot of things where technology is required right now. Well, so, you know, especially as it pertains to music, obviously, you know, that the touring business has been completely gutted and artists are trying to find ways to monetize, uh, you know, what they used to be doing by gigs. And, you know, they're doing streaming now and doing Venmo and, you know, asking for donations and things like that. And there's been a, you know, a kind of a swell of different technologies that have emerged to help with that. And, you know, from my perspective, I'm real happy to say that uh, the, the company that I run called Venue, uh, VNUE, um, we have, we've had a technology now f- for several years called set.fm, like set.fm, um, that we leverage to go out and record artists and release the content live directly to a mobile device when you're leaving. You know, so for example, yeah, it's really cool. For the last three years, we worked with, uh, with Rob Thomas, uh, we were actually supposed to go out with uh, Matchbox 20 uh, this summer, but obviously that tour has been put off till next year. Uh, but what's really cool about the SetFM platform is that if you look at the music business and all the streaming that's going on, nobody is really trying to monetize the audio from the streams. And the SetFM technology, which includes a really cool plug-in for D, uh, DAW, you know, like an audio workstation, um, you can actually run that in line with the stream and uh, uh, put this content up on our platform. And instead of having to beg for money, you know, uh, on donations, fans can actually go onto the website and buy the, you know, the, the audio content of what they just saw on the stream. And we're really trying to get the word out about that because it, it, it's, a, it's a void in uh, the ability for all these artists to make money. I mean, the video is great, but the audio has a lot more legs to it. So now how do you feel when, when you, when let's just say COVID goes away, everything's back to normal and, and you're hanging out with a Rob Thomas in the world and you say, you know, uh, Rob, I put some music together. Do you say anything about it or do you just let uh, nature be nature and just let it happen as it falls? Uh, you know, I, 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 <laughs> that's a good question, man. Um, the, the longer I've been in this business and, and the more people I've met um, in the beginning, I, I would have never, played the hey i'm a musician card kind of thing um but now that i have friends and colleagues <clears throat> in the industry and they know that i play music and so i'm not really shy about sharing that with with folks like rob or with his management and you know some of the other uh, artist managers that i know but you know turning them onto it is one thing i don't think that it needs to be sold hopefully the music speaks for itself um <laughs> But, you know, I'm hoping that because of the relationships, uh, you know, like I've worked with Bad Company, with Peter Frampton, with Slash, and with tons of artists. Yeah, I produced 110 live records for Peter Frampton uh, during my days uh, when Disc Live was part of Abbey, uh, EMI called Abbey Road Live. Um, but so, I've, you know, I've got some great relationships with bands that we could conceivably, you know, tour with at some point. So, you know, if and when the single gets enough traction, which I hope it will, um, and the, the EP that comes out on the first, you know, you never know. I mean, touring's not going to start up till next year. And, and if it looks like there, there's some opportunity, then I'm, I'm not going to be shy about asking about it. You know, in a really weird, interesting Kevin Bacon, Six Degrees of Separation, in, in reality, with that 100 recordings, those 100 recordings with Peter Frampton, you're just the continuation of Frampton Comes Alive. 
Exactly. Matter of fact, it was Frampton Comes Alive 35. Shut up. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Dead serious. (laughs) Dead serious. And really cool. Really cool guy. Just just amazing. You know, amazing performer. He would play literally three hours straight with only a very short intermission. Um, Just crazy. It was awesome. That's him. Where's the best place where people can go to find out more about the band as well as the new music and all that kind of stuff? Because it's time to show, show, show you some love. Oh, thanks. Thanks, man. I'll, I will take every bit of it that I can get. Yeah, so um, definitely want to visit the Facebook page, facebook.com uh, forward slash Zach Bear Official, Z-A-C-H-B-A-I-R Official. And then you can go to YouTube or Instagram. It's all the same, uh, Zach Bear Official. And then importantly, if you want to stream it, buy it, whatever, it's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on literally everything. Uh, so uh, those are probably the best places to check it out. And obviously we do have a, a, a website and that's ZachBearMusic.com. All right, man. When you come back to Charlotte, you get we got to get together, have a face-to-face conversation, record it while we're eating barbecued ribs and drinking sweet Southern tea. I'm all about it, man. <laughs> all about it. And nice to know you're in Charlotte, too. That's really cool. Odd coincidence. Well, you be brilliant this weekend, okay, Mr. Zach Bear? You, you as well, man. Thank you so much, and I certainly appreciate it. That's Play It Forward. Hey, you can get more conversations just like this on all three of my podcasts. Like It's Live, Unplugged and Totally Uncut, and View from the Writing Instrument, found on every digital platform.